Fame. We mentioned earlier that the 125 matchup is going to end up being a forfeit for the Panthers. LJ Bentley not able to wrestle. Christian Moody, the 17th ranked wrestler in the Intermat polls, will get the automatic victory, and Oklahoma will go up 6 to nothing right off the bat. So the Panthers start this Sunday match in a hole. You know, we hope to have LJ back in the lineup soon. A senior from Pittsburgh, 11th ranked. Here's 133 for you. We talked about Dom Forey's, the wrestler to highlight for the Panthers, 11th in the Intermat Bulls at 8-2. And, and then Jake Rubio for the Sooners coming into today at 7-4. and four. Expect a lot of fireworks out of Dom quick. He comes off the bat really hot. He has a lot of heavy hands, puts up a lot of numbers in his points in his, uh, in his matches here. Panthers wearing the green band today, and the Sooners wearing the red. You're scoring. Dom trying to get a two on one here. Heavy hands moving forward. Expect that out of Dom. Nice shot, low single. Cutting the corner here up to his feet. Nice foot sweep to a takedown. It's textbook by Dom here. Four is quickly up two to nothing in the first round of the 133 division. You see riding time start to kick in right away. Dom's got a nice ride, leg ride, working for it. Rubio up and out. Rubio with one. Well, the way Dom wrestles is he tries to tire you out. He's He jumps at it right away. And he wrestles the full seven minutes. Even if he's winning, even if he has a major decision locked up already, he's still trying to score points. One thing about Dom is he tries to take the energy out of you. And there's another shot by him. Same shot, actually. Same situation. Same takedown. See him try to throw that leg in right away. That's good chain wrestling uh, by Dom there. One thing that we talked about, Anthony, before we came on to today is when you wrestled, it was always – Whoever started the match, everyone else would feed off of that person. And today, there's no 125, so Dom is the guy that sets the tone for the Panthers. And with Forey's bringing this energy right now, what is this going to do for the Panthers going through the rest of the match, assuming he will hold on to what he's doing right now? Yeah, I mean, one thing you try to measure is his effort and his attitude and his demeanor right on the mat. Win or lose, you have a good effort, you have a good demeanor. It, people build off that. Builds off the crowd, builds off the next wrestler, and you kind of go down the chain, 133, 41, 49, and everybody tries to feed off each other there. It's a pretty good guy to have start your match for you. Of course, you don't want to have a forfeit at any weight class and give up six points in the duel, but... Dom Forey's the 11th ranked wrestler in the Intermat poll, a local guy from Pittsburgh and North Allegheny High School, the all-time win holder at North Allegheny. Yeah, Dom came right into Pitt and had an impact right away. He was a 125-pounder and uh, national qualifier freshman year. He's racking up a minute 30 riding time right now. He's got him pinned flat on the mat um, with a nice tight bar, and that's hard. He's looking for a second bar arm here. And Rubio's in a tough spot, flat on his belly, trying to work up. Just not much you can do with all that pressure on top by Dom Forey's. Looks like the first round in 133 will close out with Forey's taking a 4-1 lead. Here's Dom just walking in, lowering his level, two hands to the leg, and immediately comes to his feet, wastes no time letting the defensive guy uh, square his hips up to him. That's textbook takedown by Dom. Forys will start on the bottom. Rubio gets the top. Rubio, a two-time state champion out of Amarillo, Texas, in Randall High School. Dom working to his feet here, trying to create a base, cuts, and watch him watch him to get a quick takedown here. He wastes no time. And there it is, another single leg to the right leg. Uh, Rubio doing a nice job of squaring his hips up. He's just trying to keep Dom's head down at this point. Dom trying to better his position and get the angle. You see him start working his back, bending his back there, and a cut across. Hook the ankle. Now he's in trouble. Once you hook that ankle, Rubio's a little bit of in trouble now to a point where he had to, he had to let it go or else he'd put himself in a little bit of danger there. Dom's got a low legs. Low leg cradle now, looking to drive forward, get a cradle. Rubio slips out of that. One 
There's Dom with two minutes of riding time now. Unless something crazy happens. Should safely get that time advantage point at the end of the match. Yeah, I'd say it's almost locked in. Um, I'm not sure if Rubio will take down third period or not. He might go neutral. He's having a tough time getting out, of, out on bottom right now. I uh, would not be surprised if Dom cuts him this period and tries to work for another takedown. But look for Dom to score some points. Warriors came into this match pretty hot. Won his last five matches in a row. Coming off of a season where he was an ACC champion at 133 pounds. And qualified for the NCAAs the last three seasons as well. Yeah, he's has a top eight ranking right now. Top 10, top 12 area. Uh, throughout some of the rankings, he's looking to get on the podium. I know, I know Dom well enough where if he didn't get on the podium, uh, I think in his eyes it'd be a little bit of a disappointment. But he has the talent, he has the gas tank, he's got all the tools necessary to get on the podium in a deep weight class. Nice shot by Dom there. He switched it up there, went high crotch, head outside instead of a single leg where the other three takedowns came from. Now he's back in the same position. He's a little bundled up now. Rubio's in a good spot. We'll finish out the second period. When Dom's third periods, though, they are something to note. Third period is where he strives a lot because he has the gas tank on him. Expect him to work for the major decision here. Just needs a few points here. Expect him to be aggressive. He lets Rubio up and out for one to start the third period. Rubio did get a stalling warning just before the end of the second. See the dual score, Oklahoma 6 to nothing after the forfeit in the 125-pound weight class by Pittsburgh. Dom needs that second stalling call if he wants to work for a major decision. It looks like he's just going to have riding time locked up here. Uh, so you're looking at 8-3 to three score, and there's Dom with another leg. There's a stalling call. That's a point for Dom Forries. Now he can go to work and work for the major decision here, which a team needs that extra extra team point. Now you see a little more action out of Rubio here. A little more movement and working some ties. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he took, an, took a shot here. And there's Dom with another inside single. Nice defense by Rubio. Dom coming to his feet where he wants to be. Watch him use this reshot here. He has the underhook. Dom moving his feet. Rubio hanging on there. Rubio staying in good position. Hand fighting back just as hard as Dom is. And in Rubio's case here, he does not want to give up the major decision. Look for him to stay in really good position, hard defense, and if he lasts this 30 seconds for Oklahoma, consider that a win, just giving up three points instead of four. At about 20 seconds to hold that out. Dom working the ties, trying to open his hands up, get past his head, hands defense, and there it is, same shot again. Waste no time allowing for a scramble again. Beautiful shot by Dom there. Getting to the finish quickly, and that'll finish the match. He'll get the time advantage as well. Final score in the major decision, 12-3 to for Dom Quarries. So a nice start for Pitt. Dom had some really nice takedowns this match. All solid. Didn't give the opponent much. Him in March, too. Two seniors, two experienced guys. And this is definitely the marquee match of the night. One interesting stat about these two. They have uh, wrestled two years ago. And Longo was a transfer from App Appalachia State. Longo ho holds a win over Zanetta 9-6. to six. But other than that, they have wrestled 38 common opponents throughout their careers. It's kind of interesting to hear that. Longo, heavy hands type of guy, explosive, powerful, strong. Zanetta, pretty tech technical. Uh, a lot of clean takedowns. Expect some tough hand fighting out of both of these guys. It's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. What does that say about two guys when they go up against each other? Of course, the last time they met was a few years ago, but to have that many common opponents, you you don't see that very often, high in that number. No, you don't. I guess it is just because both of these guys are seniors and they stayed at 141 their entire career. Um, 
Now, with facing 38 opponents, for them to only wrestle one time is pretty, pretty funny. But um, they're definitely familiar foes. They know who each other are. They wrestle the same tournaments. But one thing about these two wrestles and their common opponents, you really can't find much consistency as far as them beating both of the same guys or losing to both of the same guys. There's a lot of uh, opposite there. See Nick Zanetta from Pittsburgh. Redshirt senior, been here for a while. And, of course, Michael Longo, senior, number 19 in the open mat bowl from Corona, California. Longo with a head and arm there, tried to step in, looked really tight, putting Nick Zanetta's shoulder a little bit of a bad spot. But Zanetta trying to fight that two-on-one uh, Russian tie-up. Nice fakes there, keeping him at bay. Um... One of those common opponents, Anthony, that you spoke about is Montserrat of West Virginia. And that just happened for Longo a few days ago against Christian Montserrat. He lost an 8-2 decision. And a few weeks before that, Nick actually took a victory, a 7-1 decision over Montserrat. And given that that's so similar uh, in terms of timing where that match fell for both these guys, does that come into play today as far as watching tape on either guy? I think it does because it's so recent. Um, many would say that the Montserrat match against Longo was an upset, but we got Longo night in on a nice shot now. Zanetta fighting it off, closed wizard position, coming to his feet, kick. And Zanetta will try to hold on here as Longo is in a tough position. And we'll get the takedown there. Now Zanetta has to work up. You got 20 seconds left in the match. This is a big one, one point escape here he needs to get. Longo with a 2 nothing advantage as the first round comes to a close. You got Zanetta's leg trapped there. He's kind of wondering uh, what's going on there. Um, kind of a stalemate position. Not much you can do. Uh, smart by Longo keeping it there. Got to give him credit for that. Uh, ref stops the match with two seconds left. We'll see Longo probably go into the second period with a 2-0 advantage. Riding time in favor of Longo, of course, now up almost to 24 seconds as we head to the second round of the 141-pound division. Longo going down here. Zanetta's had some success on top recently. With his tilts, uh, his forward pressure, let's see if he's going to look for a two-on-one tilt, look for a turn here. Nice roll by Longo and cuts, turns out in four seconds. Now we're getting back to wrestling here. Two heavy hand fighters, two guys looking to get a takedown. Longo's been chasing that underhook on the right side there. Isn't that with a shot? Nice slide by. Off of his shot. Zanetta with a roll. And the ref calls two as they go out of bounds. Longo with some good tournament experience. A three-time NCAA qualifier. One of those coming at Appalachian State when these two actually met a few years ago. 31-17 and 17 career record. And last year, he won Oklahoma's Most Improved Wrestler Award. So, something to write home about. Is wrestling is very much... Maybe more than any other sport, Anthony, about the growth throughout a season. Get that award from your team has got to mean something. Heck, yeah, that is. Um, both guys, very good improvement over their careers. With seniors now and having a lot of experience, they should have uh, some of that stuff. Zanetta back with two points now off a nice shot. And you see him start to wake up a little bit after getting taken down twice. Now he's resting. Now we got ourselves a match. Cuts him 6-3. to three. Look for Zanetta to get back to it and try to try to get the points back. Longer hanging on wrist here. Staying in a nice position. Both guys pulling on each other's head. Wearing out that neck. Wearing out that back. Wearing those legs out. Uh, st still a lot of wrestling left. Zanetta coming off of a season where he finished fourth in the ACC championships at 141. Then all ACC academic team also the last couple of seasons. 61 and 49 career record. He's lost four of his last six coming into today, but this one's looking to be a tight finish here. Yeah, Zanetta, he's trying to 
you know, get a nice little win streak here, feel good in 2018, carry the season off in the right way. He's working hard here. Longo's working hard. Two guys, seniors. And this is a big match for the national qualifications. And then back in on a shot. Longo, nice defense because he squares his hips up right there. Zanetta's got this underhook. See if he uses it. He needs to get off his feet there. Work up. Crowd and the pit bench are getting into it heavily here. Take a look at... Michael Longo's takedown from the period. <laughs> so Longo just a slide by off of Nick Zanetta's shot, actually. Nick Zanetta putting the pressure there. Rolls, and they try, he tries to get himself out of bounds before the ref awards two. Close call, but nice shuck off of Zanetta's shot there. Zanetta on bottom, looking to get out. Kind of in a crab rod position there. Now he's got his arm in a bad spot, but he's going to come out here with one. Shake it out, get back in there, minute 40 to go. Takedown is huge here, could put the match away for Longo, makes it right back in it. It was a nice attempt. Longo chasing that, that overtie. Riding time at 30 seconds for Longo. Now Longo, Longo, watch him, you got the crowd behind Zanetta now. Screaming, stalling. Uh, Zanetta probably needs a couple more shots to get a stalling call. But you can see the intensity rising from both guys. Longo's just going to try to stay in tight position, hold off this takedown. You got a minute left. There's your stall warning. One minute. There's a shot by Zanetta back in. Single leg needs to get to in corner now. With Longo grabbing that left leg, that right leg there, make it tough for Zanetta. See Zanetta's locked tight, but he's not in good position. He's down. What kind of mentality do you have to have being down by two right here with so little time left in the final period? Well, your legs are tired. Your lungs are burning. Um, you're beat up. But you got to dig deep. We were talking about finding motivation earlier. And there's a nice shot. Let's see if he can get it here. He needs to get the foot up off the mat. He gets the foot up off the mat. That puts Long in a tough position. He goes to the waist, the ref and Morton, and he gets two, and is the ref going to get two back points now? Back points for Zanetta with 15 seconds to go to possibly put the match away. Four near falls, incredible chain wrestling by Zanetta there. Uh, he's got to watch himself. He just gives up the reversal, which is fine. And what an exciting wow. end. Four points, six points, two points for a takedown. Four for near fall. Chain wrestling, that's what wins matches, close matches, incredible match. You're a proud big brother up here right now. I am. What a flurry by Nick Zanetta to claim the victory late in the third period. Zanetta got his foot up on the mat, went bear hug, which sometimes they tell you not to do, but just he realized the situation needed to get... Needed to get the two, and drove Panthers, in, and chain wrestling again. Wisconsin. Went straight to the claw ride and got the back points. And now he's in a good position with 